Pray for me also, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me, that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. The word of the Lord to the Spirit. Prayer is the key. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 and 19. 
And that is the reason when we gather this way, we don't pray just for ourselves, we pray for the community. And we pray in agreement. That is why we all left our homes, because we believe that Jesus is here with us. And we have an appointment with him. And what we unite and ask of the Lord is granted unto us. And that is the reason I was motivated in the spirit to reflect this evening on Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, chapter 6, from verse number 10 to 20, to call each and every one of us to a life, a more committed life of prayer to our vision. As you listen to that reading, verse 18 and 19 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. Pray on all occasions. Can you help me tell someone around you, please pray on all occasions. Praying on all occasions. Those of us who are conversant with the themes of the scripture, Ephesians chapter 6 is one of those passages of the scripture in the New Testament that you cannot just walk across without stopping over to reflect. Because it deals with something, a theme that is, is strong and is a bone of contention for all we do in humanity, even when we do not realize it. What do I mean? In Ephesians chapter 6, after Paul had discussed every other beautiful thing, Ephesians begins by saying, Blessed be the Lord and God of our, our Father Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. And he says a beautiful hymn about what Jesus has achieved in our lives, beginning from verse 1. And he did all manner of teachings, but at the last chapter, chapter 6, Paul gets into something that he, he started by saying, Finally, he talked about Christian unity. He talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He, 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 he lectured us on doing the will of God, on departing from the old way in order to live the new life, on not giving the devil opportunity through anger, and on forgiving one another as Christ, God has forgiven us in Christ. But in chapter six, he dealt a little with family life, and then say, finally, to summarize everything I have taught you, say, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. He said, this is the only way you will be able to resist the evil day. My dear friends, we have 365 days and all of them are not rosy. And one evil day can spoil the joy of the rest of 364. And that is why the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the devil's scheme. Because every year we set in, we have set in to struggle, to work hard. And in working hard, we battle through things. We want not just flesh and blood. The things we encounter as human beings does not just end in the physical. That's what Paul is saying. Most of the time, we limit our expectations and our battles to the physical. And it is only defective because every human being is a composite of spirit and body. Incidentally, our world emphasizes more what it sees and what it can touch, which is the physical, the transient, the bodily. And these things pass away. The real thing that matters, that is the spiritual, is not giving enough emphasis in humanity. When we talk about success, we emphasize only efforts, our physical efforts. Forgetting the fact that the world in which we are is a world of body and spirit. And 
that the spiritual controls the physical. Most of the time we see only the physical. And that is what appears to matter for us. But beyond this physical, there are things happening in the spirit realm. Even when we do not take it serious as Christians, those who are not Christians, especially those who are given to occultism and those who serve the evil one know that there is a current beyond the physical. And they plan themselves and prepare themselves to combat with those who are coming from the kingdom of God. Incidentally, Jesus warned that the sons of this world are more astute in dealing with their kind. They plan ahead, unlike the sons of the kingdom. That is the reason Paul decided to call us, to call our attention to the spiritual battle that is on and that is raging in the life of every Christian and in the world. Though we may not notice it, though we may not take cognizance of it, and the devil likes it, the Bible says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. When we do not know that things are happening in the spiritual, we only fight the physical battle, not knowing that most of the things we are fighting in the physical have their roots in the spiritual. And that is the reason it would be nice for us to sit down in the presence of Jesus and discuss issues with him. Mary knew how to do that. Matter was only busy with the physical. And Jesus told Matter, you toil about too many things. Only one is important, and Mary has traced me that back. And in calling attention to that, Paul marshaled out what he called the whole armor of God, the full armor of God, describing this Roman soldier. I am not taking you to spiritual warfare. That's a different thing altogether. But I am calling your attention to, after Paul would have taught the people of God what it means to be a soldier, because we are soldiers of Christ. Classical theology in the Catholic Church teaches us that we are the church militant. The church is theatrical. We are the church triumphant who are in heaven. We are the church suffering who are in purgatory, who are passing through the state of purgation, heading towards heaven. But then we are the church militant. We are facing the battle. That is why we are called the church militant. But how military is the church in our time? Paul says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist on the day of evil. You may be able to resist when things are not working the way you have planned them. You may be able to stand your ground when the years start turning up and down. You may be able to stand your ground when the waves start hitting at your house. I remember the parable that Jesus gave in the Gospel of Luke about two men who went to build a house in Luke chapter 6. See, one of them established his house on the rock. The waves came, the girls blew, and struck on the house and could not be pull it down because it was well established on the rock. And Jesus Christ is that rock. And that is why I am trying to remind you that as we begin this year, you have to work hard to establish your own household and your own family on the rock. Paul says, put on the whole amount of God. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith to quench the burning darts of the evil one, which means that the enemy is constantly shooting arrows at us. Psalm 91 says, the arrows that fly by day and the arrows that fly by night shall not have access to our home, which means arrows are being shot and you need the shield of faith. He talked about the helmet of salvation because that is where we're heading. If we don't make salvation, then there's no point to answer a Christian. He talked about the sword of the Spirit and even the zeal to spread the word of God for your shoes and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. After Paul had explained all these weapons of defense and the only weapon of offense given us was the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, he said something. Good News Translation says it, to all this. So, there are two parts to that reading. One is mentioning the weapons of warfare and the weapons of defense, defense that you have to put on as a child of God in order to battle. But he said, to all this, after all this, then pray in every occasion. I chose the NIV translation because it uses all in four places. He says in verse 18, pray in the spirit on all occasions. 
with all kinds of prayer. So there are two things here. The first two all says, pray in all occasions with all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer. So let us talk about praying in all occasions. Because for that occasion to be successful, you need the presence of God. That is why our hymn said, I need you every hour. You need God in your life. And Paul says, it is not just a prayer that you pray and stop. It is something that is ongoing. It is our culture. You cannot wake up in the morning as a child in the family without saying, good morning, daddy. Good morning, mom. I don't know about you, but it will be disrespectful in the family to leave the house without according honor to your parents in my culture. And so spiritually, it will not be right for you to do anything without seeking the permission of the heavens. Jesus would wake up early in the morning and he would leave his disciples in the room and he would go out to settle out the day with God in prayer, despite his busy schedule. And Paul says, pray in the spirit. In all occasions, don't let any opportunity pass you by. Whatever you are about to do, commit it to prayer. That things work out well for you does not mean that it works out well for everybody and that it will work out well for everybody in every occasion. I counseled a young woman recently, just like three days ago, and she's in excess county. And everything had gone wrong with her program in school. She sits in for exams with others. They will have their results. Her own will not come out. She battles that one when it comes out, they will post the result at the end of the school year to her address and it will not get to her. She will report to the school, change the address and still it will not come. They will book for a program in another institution and she will pay for it and others will book and the names of others will appear, her own name will not appear there. It doesn't all work out well for people at all times. Because battles are going on. That is the reason people get into marriage. Some are enjoying it, some are enduring it. You need to pray in all occasions about everything. That is what it means to be a true child of God. To let God be part of everything you do. Because apart from Him, you can do nothing. I can do nothing. And Paul says, pray in the Spirit. Let you, not, not just a prayer you. There are times you look at people who are praying and you know that these people are not. Most of the time when we say pray in the spirit, it's as if praying in, in tongues or praying from, from the heart. That is exactly what it means. Not just a prayer, you, you pray and you observe the other person. Yeah. Hannah was praying in the spirit. And Eli got into the temple, and Hannah did not take notice of the prophet in the temple. She was totally engrossed. Her mind was into what she was doing. It was not a distracted prayer. It was not a wayfarer's prayer. It was a committed prayer. Not the kind of prayer people are assembled in the church, and they are waiting for phone calls when you are in the place of prayer. You are not communing. You are not communicating. Prayer is a communion with God. Not only that you speak to God, you also listen to God. And you cannot serve two masters at a time. You need commitment. That is why the Bible says, pray in the Spirit. Let there be a connection, a connectivity. And Paul says again, pray in all occasions, pray all around. Pray in the car when you are going out. Pray in the car when you are coming back. Pray in the workplace. Find time to pray. You can do personal prayers, intercessory prayers. And he says, pray all kinds of prayer, all manner of prayer. My dear friends, most of the time, what we need and know and do is a prayer of petition. Lord, I need this. Lord, I need that. Lord, prevent this. Lord, prevent that. There are all kinds of prayers. We can go into a prayer of thanksgiving. Take up a day, an hour to thank God. I bet you, if I say, let us thank God here in the next five minutes, a lot of us will be exhausted. We'll learn the language to thank God and appreciate God. But we have no language when we want to appreciate our friends. Call them names. 
promote them, especially when you want to get something from your beloved one, your husband or your wife, you start calling her names. Oh, pretty one. My, you, you know names you can call. But stand up in praise of God. Most of the time we lack the language to praise God. My dear friends, there are all kinds of prayers. Prayer of praise, prayer of petition, prayer of sacrifice. Prayer of thanksgiving, and even prayer of warfare. I remember in Psalm 139, verse number 6, the Bible said, let the praise of God be on your lips and a two-edged sword in your hand. You need to fight. There are times when you can stand your ground in prayer and begin to pray against whatever the devil has planned or is planning about you, about your family, and about people. Praying in every occasion and praying all manner of prayers. All manner of prayers may be prayer of petition, prayer of contemplation, prayer of praise, prayer of warfare, midnight prayer, morning prayer, man, prayer of the mass, the liturgical prayers, all these are kinds of prayers. But you can also look at it from a different perspective, from the perspective of your personal prayer, because you have a personal thing to do with God. And then, moving out of your person, you go into family prayer, because you are also concerned about the family. There are people who pray individually, but they do not pray as families. And I think some kind of prayer is lacking in that family. Because apart from your individual temple, because your body is the temple of the living God, there needs to be a family altar where God communes with the family as a group, as a team. If your family is not praying, then pull them into prayers. That is what God is calling you to. Pray in every occasion and pray all kinds of prayer. Apart from the family prayer, what they call media prayer. When you finish your family prayer, if you have a prayer of adoration, a parish family gathering for prayers, don't sit at home. Make it your prayer. It's a communion thing. That is why you're part of this community. When you are not here, part of the body of Christ, it's not here. Stop creating the gap and the lacuna we create when we gather in the family prayer. Scripture says, pray all kinds of prayer. Communal prayer, family prayer, personal prayers. In all quality of prayers we can. That is what scripture is calling us. Pray all kinds of prayer. Pray in every possible occasion. Pray with supplications. Asking God for your needs. Praying without season. Standing your ground always. Like Jesus gave the parable of the woman, the widow who was going to the unjust judge and was knocking at his door every day. That is supplication. Give me justice. Give me justice. Give me justice. Until that was done. Praying until something happens. And then Paul says something again. He says, pray for me. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Not only praying about yourself, about your family, about your need, but you have a responsibility to pray for the church of Christ, to pray for all the saints. There are some who are not here, who would have been here, and they need someone to stand in the gap. God says, I want someone to stand in the gap. God needs us to stand in the gap at times. There are times God needs us to pray for other people, for your friend who is not in church. And not just discussing, oh, she didn't come, oh, he didn't come. As if it is easy. Maybe something is holding him or her. You can intercede, you can step out.